Okay, another quick video today because I'm working on a bigger project that's coming out in a couple of days. This is a game from 1788. In this position, François-André Danican Philidor, you might recognize Philidor from Philidor Defense, I'm going to put it here. That's that opening that you're thinking of right now. Philidor here has the white pieces and he plays this stunning move. By the way, this game is weird. There's, there's a reason why there's a blunder in the thumbnail. He played bishop h5 here. Bishop h5 is a brilliant move. Here it's the only winning move of this position, and it is a breakthrough. Uh, it says great here, but it's totally a brilliant move. It's the only winning move. If you take this bishop, white has a breakthrough with g6, and then h7 and h8, and you're going to queen, and you're going to win. For example, if rook f8, then you have g7, rook here, and then h7. Or let's say if rook back, then you have h7, and if takes, then you take here and nothing can stop the promotion to a queen, right? His opponent plays rook h7, which is doubtful, but at the same time, it's very hard to defend here with the black pieces, understandable. And now, Philidor does a huge blunder. He plays bishop g7. And this draws the game automatically. The idea here is that you want to close in this rook and kind of put it in jail. Jail. I'm going to put the meme there of the Venezuelan in the Parks and Rec. <laughs> jail. Straight to jail. You're stealing. Right to jail. You're playing music too loud. Right to jail. Right away. You're driving too fast. Jail. Slow. Jail. Jail. Right? So here you're threatening actually the fork still, but this rook is now in jail. Now, this is completely winning. I don't know why he didn't play this. I mean, it's not even recoverable for the black pieces. This fork essentially forces rook f7 to defend the check and the attack. We would take here, king takes, and then just like h7 with h8. These, these two pieces create a vast wall that the king cannot access this pawn from. So that would have been easier and simpler, but no. Bishop g7, and now you have to find the defensive move. I'm going to give you five seconds. Here it's king f7 to defend g6. You have to play it. It's the only move that, saved the, that saves the position. But no, he plays takes. And the reason that takes is bad is the same reason as before why it was always bad to take this bishop. There's a breakthrough. And now this time the breakthrough hits on the rook that's already in jail and incites the rook to basically sacrifice itself. The beauty of g6, I will argue, is that if rook takes, we have h takes, and these pawns are now forming a wall against the king and bishop, and you cannot stop g8 with queen. Absolutely beautiful. In the game, he takes here, and then Philidor has a, an easy game, because this pawn is dropping, and this past pawn is way too strong. No, this is over. The engine is bugging, sorry. So king e7 was played, and now the easy conversion here. Bishop f7, strange move. I would have just done, like, bishop back. Even though it's completely losing, this is a weird move. Anyways, that is chess in 1788. Bishop f8, by the way, is clinical, absolutely clinical to convert. You're taking up, up this e7 square and the g7 square and guarantees your king to land on f6, the square that we want, on the next move. And so if king takes, we have king f6. And then goodbye. And after king f6, the black piece is resigned. Mm -hmm.